Hi, my name is Chris Thomas. Welcome to this tutorial. Here I'm going to be showing you the very basics of Active Primary 3, the interactive whiteboard software from Prometheum. When you first run the software, you'll see this dashboard window, which is used for creating new flip charts, opening existing flip charts, and managing various resources. So I'm going to start by clicking on New Flip Chart from here. Now it's worth knowing that there are two main modes for Active Primary. There's Design Mode, which is used when you're preparing flip charts prior to a lesson, and there's Presentation Mode, which is used when you're in the classroom, actually connected to the interactive whiteboard. So because I'm going to prepare a lesson now, I need to go into Design Mode. To do that, I click on the icon here, and then select the second icon along Design Mode. Once I've done that, the software will indicate to me that I'm in design mode by putting a red border around that icon. So the first thing I want to add to my flip chart page is some text. I'd like to add a title and a learning objective. To do that, I simply select the text icon just here, and you'll notice I get a new text toolbar which appears at the bottom of my screen. This allows me to change the styling of my text, and it should be fairly self-explanatory. So when I want to place some text on my screen, all I have to do now is click where I want the text to go. So I've clicked at the top and I'm going to now enter a suitable title. There we go. Now I've got a slight problem that it's spread this across two lines and I really want it to fit onto one line. Now the reason it's done that is because my text box isn't actually large enough to take the text I've written. So by clicking and dragging on this anchor, I can actually change the width of my text box. So if I make that a bit wider, I'll make sure it fits. There we go. So once it's fitting in my text box, I can select my text and make some changes to how it appears. So I want this to be in blue, I'd like it to be underlined, and I really want it to be a little bit bigger. So to change the font size, I could pick a font size from this drop list here, or I could use the plus and minus buttons to make it bigger or smaller accordingly. There we are, I like that, I just need to make my text box slightly wider to fit it in. Now to place a new piece of text, I simply click somewhere else on my page. So I'm going to put my learning objective just over here on the left hand side. Ok, there's my learning objective. I need to change the style of this font now though, because it's just a little bit too dominant on my page. So I'm going to select my writing and make it quite a bit smaller. And I also want to underline learning objective like that. I'm just going to make this a little bit narrower so it stretches further down my page rather than spreading across the whole page. So once I've added all the text that I want to add to my page, I can click on the arrow here which will turn off the text tool and give me the option to just position things exactly where I'd like on the screen like that. So that's how to use the text tool. The next tool is the pen tool, and this is used a great deal when you're actually standing at the interactive whiteboard in presentation mode. It can be used in design mode, but it's worth noting that it's very difficult to actually draw anything accurately using the mouse, but I'll still show you how to use it. So to select the pen tool, I simply click on the pen here, and again you'll notice the toolbar along the bottom changes. I'm now presented with three main sections, highlighters, pens, and rubbers. I've got three thicknesses for my highlighters, very thin, which looks like that, all the way up to very thick, which looks like that. Now the main difference between highlighters and pens is that highlighters provide a kind of semi-transparent colour, so you can still see the other annotations that are underneath what you've just highlighted. You can still change the colour of your highlighters using the colour picker along the bottom. So that's how to use the highlighters. Next I've got my pens, and again I've got some different thicknesses, everything from something that's very thin to something that's very, very thick. And again I can use my colour picker to select different colours for use with my pen like that. Finally I've got my rubber tool. Again I've got three thicknesses which I can use to rub out various annotations on the board. It's worth knowing that this won't rub out things like text, instead it's actually rubbing out your annotations. Okay, so that's how the pen tool can be used. Next I'm just going to show you how to clear the objects from your screen, so that if you've got a messy screen like I have here, you can get rid of everything and make a fresh start. That's done under this clear tool here, and when you click on that you're presented with three options, which have three slightly different functions. The first one on the left is clear screen. When I click on that, you'll see it gets rid of absolutely everything. 
The next option is clear objects. And when I click on this, it's going to get rid of any objects on my screen apart from my annotations. So that includes things like shapes that I've added from the resource library, but also some text. So you'll see when I click that, my text goes leaving my annotations. The final option is clear annotations. And this is the one I tend to use more than anything else. It's the one that gets rid of any of my annotations that I've used using my pen or highlighter tool. So by clicking that, it removes any of those annotations, leaving me my basic template that I'm ready to use for this lesson. So now I've got my template set up, I'm ready to go ahead and add some text for use in this lesson. Now at the moment, my flip chart file only consists of one page, and I can see that by clicking on this page selector button. All of my pages will be displayed along the bottom of the screen, and as you can see, I've only got the one page. So what I can do when I'm in design mode is I can click this icon here, which is my page organizer. And what that will do is it will bring up an overview of the whole flip chart file. And at the moment, as you can see, I've only got my one page. But by clicking on it, I can now copy this, I could paste it, I could put it in the bin, or I could duplicate it. And duplicating pages is very useful when you're preparing a lesson. So I'll click on duplicate and you'll see I've now got a second page. I'm going to do that again because I think I need three pages for this lesson. So now I'm going to go ahead and add some information to page number two. And to do that, I simply double click on page two. Now we know we're on the second page of my flip chart file now because the number two is displayed on the right hand side. Right, as you can see, I've now added some extra text onto a couple of pages of my flip chart. At the moment, I'm showing you page two. When I'm ready to go onto page three, I simply click on the arrow here, which will take me to the next page. And again, clicking on the left-hand arrow takes me to the previous page. Now, if I decided these pages weren't quite in the right order, I can actually move them around by going into the page selector tool. Here you can see a little thumbnail of all of those pages. And by going onto the page organizer part of this section, I can actually click and drag on these pages to change the order of them. So I really want to have my blank page to begin with when I'm going to introduce the lesson. And then I think I'll put this page here just to try and gauge the children's understanding. When I'm happy with the order of my pages, I simply click on the cross here, which will return me back to the page view. Okay, so I think I've got enough information there for my lesson. What I now need to do is to save my flip chart. And to do that, I'll click on the icon just here and click on the disk, save flip chart. Now I have the option to save this to different locations. For example, I could save it to my flip charts, which traditionally is a folder within my documents, or you might have a network set up where you could save it to a shared flip charts folder. Clicking on save to another location gives you the options to save it to a memory stick, things like that. But I'm going to click on save to my flip charts. And I'll now give this a suitable name. And then I'll click on save. And now that my flip chart has been saved. Let me just talk you through how to reopen a flip chart. So to do that, I'll just create a blank flip chart and then go through the process of opening the flip chart we've just saved. So to do that, I click on the icon in the top right hand corner and go to the open flip chart icon. And I want to open this from my flip charts. There's the lesson we've just saved and we'll click on open. Now I'm ready to present this in the class. So I'm going to come out of design mode by clicking the icon here and clicking this button here. And it shows me that I'm no longer in design mode because the red border has gone from that icon. Right, I think that concludes this introduction to the basic features of Active Primary 3. In future tutorials, I'll cover some more in-depth features, such as how to use the resource library, how to incorporate images, sounds, and videos, and also how to use actions to make your flip charts more interactive. Thanks very much for watching.